Welcome to October's Bite Size Breakfast Church. As usual, I'm Ken, and I'd like to introduce Reverend Helen. Hello. Jill. Hello. Elaine. Hi. Sheila. Hi. And Reverend Lyndon, who last weekend was priested in Swanage. Hey! Hey! hey. Last. hey. <laughs> And now an introductory prayer from Reverend Helen. And so let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful earth and richness of creation, for the changes in season and rhythm of the earth. And as we thank you for the crops and foods gathered at this time of the year, help us in turn to respect the needs of this earth and one another's needs by treating our planet and one another well. Amen. Amen. Right, so it's harvest. It's the right time of year for harvest. And it's a special time because what with COVID, there's a lot of people in need. And with us that perhaps has plenty of food, we can do things to share it. But first of all, there's a reading from Luke chapter 12 is all about a greedy farmer. Once upon a time, said Jesus, there was a rich man who spent his whole life thinking about how he could get richer. One morning, the rich man who owned a farm walked from his house to his fields. He looked at his crops and rubbed his hands together greedily. Mine, all mine! He climbed to the top of his biggest barn and looked out across the farm. Work harder! Work harder! He ordered his servants, who were loading grain, sack after sack in the hot sun. I'm very rich, but I'd like to be richer. The next week, he walked from his house to his fields. He looked at his crops and rubbed his hands together greedily. Mine! All mine! He climbed to the top of his biggest barn and looked out across the farm. Shoo! Shoo! Go away! He screamed at some birds that had swooped down and started to peck at the grain. This is mine! All mine! And you can't have any of it! Another week went by. The rich man walked from his house to his fields. He looked at his crops and rubbed his hands together greedily. Ah, mine! All mine! He climbed to the top of his biggest barn and looked out across the farm. Whoa! Stop! Thief! He shouted to a poor man who had stopped to pick up some grain which had accidentally spilt on the floor. The poor man had a wife and three children to feed and nothing to eat. You will have to find some other way to feed your family. This is mine, all mine, and you can't have any of it. The rich man walked home. He thought long and hard about his grain. Oh, it's spilling out. And the birds are eating it. Poor people are coming to steal the grain that's spilling out of the door. And I can't allow that to happen. That grain is mine, all mine. What shall I do? The next morning, the rich man walked from his house to his fields. Hey, hey! He called to his servants. Stop working. Put down your tools and come over here. So the servants put down their shovels in surprise. This barn isn't big enough. Today I want you to pull it down. Yes, pull it down completely and build a bigger one. Oh, and when you've finished, you can start to build a second one. I have tons and tons of grain, and I'm going to store it all. Then I will sell it, and I will be rich. Rich beyond my wildest dreams. Day after day, the rich man went to his fields to watch the servants building his enormous barns. He made sure that no one came by to take so much as a handful of his precious grain. At last the barns were finished. The rich man walked home. He thought long and hard about his life. I have so much I will never need to work again. 
In the morning, I will go out and buy myself some fine clothes. I'll order the best food and crates of the best wine. I'm going to have a wonderful time spending all my money, and it's mine, all mine. But that very night, the man died in his sleep. No one mourned and no one wept for the man who had all the riches in the world, but who kept them all for himself. As Jesus finished the story, he looked round. Don't be like that man, he said. People like that can never please God. Being rich won't make you happy and being selfish is always a bad choice in the end. So we're thinking of harvest time where we collect up all the crops from the fields so that we can store it to provide food for the colder months to come. And then we just heard about the farmer who um, built more and more barns so that he could store more and more of the harvest, but for himself, and so that he could become richer and richer. Now you may have heard about food banks. These are places where people can give food away. Rather than store it up for themselves, they want to help people and help others by giving it away, by giving some of it away to people that just don't have enough. We have a food bank in Paul. It's based down at St. James's Church uh, near Paul Quay, and they take donations of food and money to buy more food with so that they can distribute it to the people who really need it. So what do they do? So the people who, in, who are in need um, can be referred to them by many organisations across Paul, too many to, to name. And when they visit the food bank, they will be given enough food and supplies to live on. Usually it's a parcel and it has up to three days worth of food, very nutritious food. And they can also ask for other items, toiletries and other household goods that they might not be able to afford for themselves. Also, the food bank provides holiday parcels, usually for families um, that during the holiday during the school holidays when there aren't any school meals. And what you might not know is they also provide kettles and microwave parcels for those that live in bed and breakfast because they don't have a kitchen that they can use. And one thing I didn't know is they also do recipe bags which have food and recipes in to cook something a little bit different to what their normal meals might look like. So they learn to cook and, and experience better food or a different type of food. Isn't this a much nicer way of using what we have? And of course, it's important that we try to help our neighbors because one day we might need that sort of help ourselves. The food bank, which I didn't know this, but it's now known as Jimmy's Place, is open from Tuesdays to Friday mornings. Um, but there are other, other places and other times that you can drop off food for the food bank um, to be donated to them. For example, our own church at St John's, we have a number of volunteers who collect food every Thursday morning at the Lich Gate. And we take it down to the food bank so they can distribute it. So what type of food do they need us to donate? Can you suggest some? What about my favourite cereal or, or perhaps coffee? Great, Ken. Everyone needs breakfast and often with a really nice cup of coffee. So that's a great choice. Oh, what about some tea? Oh, and I'm sure they like some treats as well, so some biscuits to yeah, go with of course, it. Of course, Sheila, who doesn't enjoy a treat between meals? And, and also, these types of goods can be kept for a few weeks before being given away, so that's quite important. I've got Any an more? idea. What about some delicious fresh milk and some fruit and veg? Well, it really is probably better to avoid donating these types of fresh foods because they might go bad before they eventually end up into a food parcel. I like soup and baked beans. 
perfect. These make great simple meals that everybody enjoys. So yes, really good. How about these? <laughs> well, we can't live without toilet rolls. We've all got to have those and other products like toothpaste and all those other things simply to keep ourselves clean and healthy. Great, the food bank does need items like these, although you might need those loo, loo rolls in the current circumstances. Uh, but yes, they do give away essential items in each of the parcels. And then they like to have some more in store and some more of the non-popular things as well, just in case people want to ask for them. So thanks for those suggestions, some great ideas there. And so this week, why not have a look in your own cupboards um, or maybe ask someone to buy a few extra items in your shopping and find a small box or a small bag and, and perhaps you could decorate it any way you would like to, to show how much you care for those that need your help and those that need to ask for help. And then you can either bring it to church for harvest or you could bring it to the Lich Gate on a Thursday morning, if you're not at school that is, and you can see all the other donations that have been given to us. And finally, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of those of you who come down regularly on a Thursday and are giving us every week. So thank you. Thank you, Elaine. There's a lot of information there about what we can do to help people that haven't got the essentials or the food or the commodities, even the toilet rolls that they need. Uh, that perhaps we have got plenty of and can share with them. So that's plenty of information there to, to work on and so that we can give. Right, just got one quick craft this week. Um, because it's harvest, I thought I'd, I'd make a vegetable. Well, I'm going to make some sweet corn. Um, the, there's an image on our website, there's no instructions because uh, I'm sure it'd be easy to follow. The first thing to do is um, Mark out some feet. If you put your feet on some green paper, like that, either green paper or card or a piece of white paper, you can colour it in. Then, or you get your hand or, or your parent's hand, you've got a big hand, draw around your hand onto yellow paper. And once you've done that on the yellow paper, get some brown paint, dab your fingertip on it, and Dab it all over so that starts to look like a cob of sweet corn. Then all you need to do, here's one I made earlier, put the two feet on the bottom of the cob and there's your sweet corn. There we are. Now, sweet corn's not the only vegetable we're talking about. Lyndon had lots of different ideas, didn't he, about apples and, and, and leeks, wasn't it, Lyndon, I think? Apple or leek, no. So I'm sure that you can perhaps draw or make some other vegetables um, and take a photograph of it. And if you send it to our parish office, it'll go on our website. And perhaps next time we can see what a harvest festival we've had on our website. So thank you for that. Hope you can make it. It'd be lovely to see that all the things you've made. And now Lyndon's going to lead us in a final prayer. So friends, together, let us pray. God of the harvest, we give you thanks for all the fruits of the earth. Bless us when we have plenty. Give us generous hearts to support those in need. And when we find ourselves without, Give us the courage and the dignity to ask for help. Pray that you would bless all the people who volunteer at and use the food bank. We give you thanks that there are places in our communities where people can find support and love and friendship, as well as material provision. In this world where there is more than enough to feed everyone, we pray for your justice, your generosity, and your goodness for all. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so together, in the words that Jesus gave us, let us pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And I hope you managed to remember all the actions. I think they're still on our website somewhere, just in case you forgot some of them. So thank you, everybody, and we look forward to seeing you in November for our next Bite Size Breakfast Church. Cheerio. Bye. 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 Bye.